small project with biomass to biofuels, no sources to make ethanol in the place. Uh, a bit of the background for my study was living on a farm, I had seen the influences that the price and uses of corn had on many aspects of life. Since corn is a commodity, its demand is often more than its supply. And when you add another use into this equation by adding in the use of ethanol, this causes the price to drop even higher than it already was. And this has been seen since the 1980s when they started considering ethanol as an alternative. Uh, in this chart, you can see uh, the different types. On this first box uh, above the red line is the corn prices in 1982. This is as far back as I could find. This data came from the USDA website, which is table 14. I highlighted the corn prices in yellow in that box. And those prices are the dollar per bushel corn prices from January 1982 to December 1982. In February of 2008, you can see in the red, on well, orange, uh, you can see that the corn prices were already over 450. They did go back down through the um, later part of 2008 2009. But when we get into uh, 2010, early 2010, that would have been about the time that the crops had been harvested from the May 2010 floods, as many people know of the effects here in Nashville of what happened. Uh, this their effect is also in the poor areas where they were growing the corn. And so that caused the prices to go up. Add in the summer droughts that often happen from 2010 to 2011. Um, you also see that by July 2012, corn prices were set at 36 per bushel. In this study, I looked at two alternative sources to make ethanol without the use of corn. My hypothesis was there will be a viable alternative source for corn for the production of ethanol biofuel. And this alternative will be able to make as much or more gallons per acre of crop. The alternatives I studied was sugar beets and switchgrass, both of which I've looked at many different types of crops to begin with to see which kind had the high yield rates I wanted which was at the level of corn or higher. And sugar beets and switchgrass were the two I found that had these relevant um, crop yield rates. And they could be made into ethanol at some degree. This is the formula, the different types of formulas for ethanol, considering ethanol to be made from sugars and starches through the fermentation process. Um, the big one on the dog right shows that it shows the main chemical formula for ethanol, and it's also a similar to lipid structure. In the lower left-hand side, one with the um, colored on it, you can see the chemical formula for that, written out as an abbreviated form, which is also similar to the glucose formula C6H2O6, and so the sugar and starch formulas needed to form it into ethanol. This is a picture that is commonly seen in promotion of corn ethanol, showing that the ethanol is coming straight from corn from the middle room. But what if the picture comes to this using switch grass, or this using the sugar beets? For my procedure, I did a pre experimental research to gain information and statistics on the currently used corn ethanol, as well as what was needed for me, this biomass, into the ethanol. I also researched other biomass that could be and was being fermented into ethanol, as well as those that were in space. Um, some of the sources I used to obtain my pre experimental data was the EOS or USDA website, sugarcane.org, farmcon.com, which is a, a corn ethanol production, Montana EDU, ethanol steel plants, new energy and fuel, and the EIA website. These were the gallons per acre of yields that I used. In corn, the gallon per acre of yield is 300 to 400 gallons per acre, multiplied by how many acres you have for that crop. Sugar beets have an exceptional yield of 550 to 600 average gallons per acre of yield, and switchgrass has 350 to 700 <coughs> gallons per acre of yield in the actual field crop, but they have this enormous number of 1,150 in their tank. And I think with further engineering, the, the, the actual plots could become a low-tech plot. 
Um, I pass it for the presence of carbohydrates and starches, i.e., the men is the lazy pass for carbohydrates and an iodine pass for starches. The glucose and starch solutions would use with my control to base off of to make sure they had the right coloring in the Bendix and iodine pass. Corn was used to compare the levels as to the desired levels needed to make corn, uh, corn or ethanol. Um, corn, switchgrass, and sugar beets would have all form, as well as glucose and starch solutions soaked overnight in distilled water. For my control equipment, I used a carbohydrate test kit, which had a vial of glucose and starch powder, as well as my Benedict uh, solution and my iodine. And I was able to obtain this test kit through a grant from the Tennessee Academy of Science, and I was grateful for that um, grant to be able to continue this study. I mixed the glucose and starch as directed in the test kit. I used one millimeter pipette to distribute five milliliters of the solution into various test tubes. I tested for the presence of starch and carbohydrates on all of my controls as well as on my test subject. For my Bendix solution, I used the one milliliter pipette again to distribute the diffused water among the test tubes as it soaked overnight. <coughs> then with the sterilized tweezers, I placed a segment of the biomass in with the diffused water for testing. I added one milliliter of the Bendix solution to the five milliliters of biomass solution and then continued the process as directed by the instruction guide. In the iodine test, I used one milliliter pipettes again to distribute five milliliters among the test I added approximately one drop of iodine, and then I recorded the results. For my Bendix solution test, since it was a color test, I was not able to gain specific numbers to get quantitative data. So I have found um, this picture that shows none, no color change to high color change for the presence of the carbohydrates. And I put that on a scale of 0 to 20, 0 showing none, 5 slight color change, 10 low, 15 was about my average, and then 20 as the high color change. And put that into a chart to gain graph. Corn had the highest carbohydrate level, which, was, which also showed me a desired carbohydrate level needed to make uh, the ethanol. The storage control and the glucose control had about a medium with a fit to diagate of 15. It was about the average color change that I um, achieved from this. In the iodine test, um, I only did a 0 to 10 scale on it because the iodine is either had, um, in the iodine test, you either have a starch or you don't. And because it's a one color to the next um, color change test, it does not show much variation for the levels. Um, so I placed corn and starch of course to the team glucose having no starch being a control of the others as well. Sugar beets and switchgrass both show promising statistics which override the current statistics of corn based on my gallons of ethanol production per acre of yield. Any of the above ethanol sources could push out um, ethanol production from corn with further evaluation of production to achieve maximum yield. Based on this research, there is not a definite viable alternative when turned to large scale mass production. Switchgrass shows promising balance for acre yield, however, it lacks in the sugar, sugar content as indicated by the slight color change during the Benedict solution test. Corn has the highest levels of sugar as shown in this example pan, in which I compare those levels with the switchgrass and sugar beet levels to, to determine whether it would have been possible to make a large mass scale production of ethanol from it. While the hypothesis was stated that there will be a viable alternative source, the research and experimentation without bias indicated otherwise. With genetic engineering and further product production, sugar beet and switchgrass are viable on small scale production, but will not be able to completely take over from corn at this time and based off the discussion of the information and data I collected from this study. Thank you. Are there any questions?
How soon do you resist using the green from the wheat to come off the, the wheat itself? I actually, I only tested the wheat itself. I did not test the greens I did. Um, on the switch grass, however, I tested the roots and then I tested the stalks and legs and I kept tested them separately. And why did you decide to approach it that way? Uh, from what I can tell in looking at the data I've collected before, I did not experience. I noticed there was mostly the field corn, and I do know some leaves and some stalk is also fermented, but the ear of the corn contains the most um, nutrients needed to ferment. And so, considering that, I tested the main product of the beef, which is the beef itself and not the greens. But then, with the switchgrass, considering it being a grass, um, I didn't know whether they would go with the roots or they would go with the seeds. And so, I split it up to test both. Thank you very much, Lee.